brought to you by my Patreons. Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Fer and today I'm gonna answer the most popular comments in the video of Understanding the Strong Force. By far, one of the most popular comments was about my pronunciation of the word, the word half. Because yeah, I pronounced it as half because I stupidly thought that since it had an L, it was pronounced with an L. Of course, this is not the case, because English has what is known as a deep spelling, which means that the pronunciation of the words is not necessarily related to how they are written. Other languages that are famous for their deep spellings are, for example, Chinese and Japanese. Meanwhile, languages like Spanish, Italian or Korean have what is known as shallow spellings, which means that if you can read a word, it is almost always pronounced the way that it is written. Similarly, if you hear a word, you can be pretty certain of how it is written. Of course, it's not the 100% of the time, there are exceptions to the rules, but honestly, that's how all languages should work. Like, it's, it's the way that makes the most sense. But uh, humans are complex and messy, and the systems we create are often as complex and messy as we are. So, <laughs> what are we gonna do? Interestingly, I also used to pronounce walk as walk and talk as talk, but I stopped saying walk when I heard the Boulevard of Broken Dreams and I heard I uh, walk a lonely road and I realized that walk did have an L. And with talk, it was because of a video by The Odd Ones Out in which he complains about talk having a silent L. And that's when I find out that he had a silent L in the first place. Uh, and I just, I thought, those are the only two words with silent L's, I'm done. But apparently not. And even worse, I, I have lived in Canada and in the United Kingdom. I spoke with people in English every day for like two years and it just never came up. No one, no one ever told me that half it doesn't have an L. <laughs> Funny how that happens. Another popular observation was made by users like Winter and Somthang, who point out that the spin statistics theorem is related to quantum mechanics and special rel relativity, and not general relativity, as I originally said. And so, yeah, you are right, that's a mistake that slipped through the cracks, and in the future I'll have other scientists proofread my scripts to avoid silly mistakes like this. Another very important observation was made by people like Freya, Juid, and Eve Harsing, who point out that the video explains why quarks stay together, forming protons and neutrons, but it doesn't explain why protons and neutrons stay together. And they are right. I sort of hand waved that explanation away. And so let me give you the simplest explanation for this mechanism that I didn't explain in the original video. So what happens is that at short distances, quarks exchange gluons between them. But at slightly longer distances, like an atomic nuclei, gluons create another kind of particle known as mesons. Which is a funny name because meson is a kind of restaurant in Spanish. But anyway, so mesons are made of a quark and an antiquark. And it is the exchange of energy through mesons that keeps protons and neutrons together. So it is the strong force because the strong force is creating these mesons, but it is a different kind of mechanism that involves gluons in a sort of secondary manner. And that's the reason I cut it from the video, because this whole tangent about mesons doesn't really contribute to your understanding of SU3, which was my main objective with this video. However, I should have said something like, in the scale of atomic nuclei, the strong force has more complex mechanisms or something along those lines, to let people know that, yeah, there are other aspects of the strong force, but I want us to focus on these aspects for now. However, if you want me to make more videos about mesons, baryons, the Eightfold Way, and many other aspects about physics and mathematics, please join my Patreon. You can join for only one dollar and that already gets you access to a ton of stuff, like the live podcast I'm gonna make on September 1st on, on the Patreon-only Discord server. So please join us. So yeah, 
shameless plug, but let's move on. Other people like C. Milkow and Narf Valls heard me explain all of these things about antisymmetry and how quarks stay together, and they had a very interesting idea. What if color charge is not the solution, or at least not the only solution? What if there are other properties simpler than color charge that we can use? Or what if we can use the properties that quarks already have? After all, they have many quantum numbers like spin, charge, flavor, and things like that. And there are two ways in which I can answer these ideas. The boring one would be to be like Rick Sanchez and say that color charge is the only alternative and I can prove it mathematically. And yeah, we can prove it mathematically, but I think the best, the better alternative is that you prove it mathematically. And it's funny because this is a habit, this is something that I used to do a lot and I still do from time to time, that when I hear that something is impossible in physics or mathematics, I tried to do it. For example, when I first learned that the harmonic series doesn't converge, I couldn't believe it. Not even after I saw the proof. And so I tried to make it converge on my own, which I knew was impossible, but I still tried to do it. And in doing so, I learned a lot about the harmonic series and infinite series in general. You could do something similar in this situation. You could try to come up with a new property, let's call it pseudocolor. And you can try to see if this new property fulfills all the requirements that we saw for the color charge. And, spoiler alert, it won't. In doing this, you will not find a new property of matter, but you will come to have a real and deep understanding of why the color charge has to be the way it is. Frederf and some other people asked about symmetries like SU0, SU4, and SU5. And so, first, let me clarify one thing. Whenever we have symmetries like SUN, that N is the number of degrees of freedom in that symmetry. And so SU0 would be a symmetry with no degrees of freedom. And that doesn't really make sense, so SU0 doesn't exist. However, SU4 and SU5 seem to be really important in nature, and these symmetries are used in schemes of grand unification, the so-called theories of everything. The problem is that while we understand these symmetries mathematically very well, perfectly even, we don't really understand the role of those symmetries in nature. And so these theories of everything are imperfect. They make predictions that we know are wrong. And actually one of them was noticed by Muitaba Alam. He basically asked if it would be possible for quarks with different colors to come together to create an anti-quark with an anti-color. It should be possible because of the way that colors add. And yeah, it, it should be possible, but we know it doesn't happen because we are made of protons and our protons aren't decaying into antiquarks. And so something must be wrong with those theories, but so far no one knows what. So this is a problem that all the theories of brand unification have, or well, most of them, and those that don't have this problem have other problems. So yeah, great observation from Muitaba Alam. And if you want to help me to make a video explaining schemes of brand unification, you already know how, with Patreon. And to finish here, let me just tell you why I made this video. You see, when I was studying quantum chromodynamics, I had a really hard time understanding it. And so I looked in the internet for books and lectures and stuff like that. And all of that did work. All of that is good content and it helped me to understand the strong force. But I always felt like I needed a video to explain a lot of the things that were really hard for me to understand. And so I said to myself that I would create that video one day. And now that I have done that and that I see that so many people liked it, that it's just what they wanted, just what they were looking for, it makes me feel a very deep emotional connection with you guys because we all share this deep desire to learn and to understand the universe around us. And that's a connection that I really appreciate and one I want to keep fostering by making more videos about all of these things that were really hard for me to understand at first, but that I now see how beautiful and amazing and cool they are. And so, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe and, and ring the bell to know when we upload that video about SU3. It's going to be a lot more mathematical. Uh, it's going to have some physics, but it's going to be more focused on the mathematics side of things. And so, yeah, see you around.
special thanks to Otimotiosum, Valerie Hyde and T. Highfield. Thank you.